scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. When you come to God, among the many things he does is to reconstruct your belief system. There are many people who believe today that their success is in the hands of someone else and they believe that somebody should succeed and come and make them successful this is the mindset sadly speaking that the average respectfully speaking the average young man in this country has an entitlement mentality let my father die and give me land let my father die and give me a house. There are even young people who continue to anticipate the death of their parents. In their lifetime, they are already discussing, where are the papers to this land? Where are the papers to this? Belief systems. We are products of our belief systems. Your belief system represents your ideology, a sum total of your philosophies. What do you know about God and who taught you? What do you know about Satan and who taught you? What do you know about succeeding and who taught you? What do you know about failure and who taught you? It matters the construction of our belief systems. There is a way the Bible says that cement right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Let me tell you something. Growing up, I had the opportunity to see some of the finest, most godly, and most sincere people that I would say then were around my life. But my life was surrounded by people who were truly failures by several standards. I saw my own father do his best, great man. I'm privileged to still have him alive. And he was one person that I saw God help, even among his contemporaries, to rise and make progress. But there was a widespread, from the region where I came from, there was a widespread of failure. It was like a signature. And I said, this could not be God's design. How come people would live in mediocre, mediocre mindsets? I knew that something was wrong. And I made up my mind as a very little boy that in the name of Jesus, I would not live a life of failure and defeat. That I would live a life that would represent the purposes of God. That I'll have the privilege and the honor contending for transformation until we help the nations call upon the name of the Lord. And glory be to the Lord, that project is still ongoing and successfully so. Hallelujah. Listen to me. You must make up your mind that you will be transformed. Let me tell you a little story. Sir, years ago, there is a hotel called Premier Hotel in Ibadan. Some of you know where I'm talking about. It's uphill. I came into Ibadan many years ago. I did not even have
transport fare, complete transport fare. And I remember entering that hotel because someone I was to meet asked me to wait for him there. I said, my goodness, what a nice place. I saw the faces of the people there. It was night, late into the night, and the person disappointed me. He said he would not be able to make it. Where would I spend the night now? I didn't know anywhere, and I would dare not even say I want to ask how much that place is. True story. Because I could not afford it, I was fortunate as I was strolling around. I found out there was a church not too far there. Fortunately, it was a Friday and they were having night vigil. I went and I, I had night vigil there. At least if I cannot sleep, let me pray. True story. Now, let me tell you this. Three years after that time, I had a program in Ibadan. And when they picked me, it was a convoy of about five to six cars. And they were taking me to my lodge. Guess where they took me? When I saw them climbing uphill, I put my hand and I said, my goodness, my God. This time around, it was not in shame and dishonor. I still saw the same faces. Some of them were still there. And they took me to the highest suit. And when they kept... Listen to me. The color of my skin did not change. The sound of my voice did not change. My height did not change. The only thing that changed was my mind no matter what changes in your life if your mind remains the same your result will remain the same the government can change your life will not change your location can change your life will not change the person you are praying for to die can die and yet nothing will change but if everything remains the same and your mind changes i promise you your life will change the real problem is not disfavor. The real problem is not the senator who has refused to sign your contract. The real problem is that there is something wrong with our philosophies and our belief systems. The starting point for true success, second only to your relationship with God, is your philosophy. Abraham, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. Not where you want to go. From where you are, lift up your eyes. The greatest miracle that happened in my life, second only to salvation and my encounter with the Holy Spirit, is the miracle of sustaining a superior belief system. Are we blessed? Number three, very quickly. The third index to measure success is... The degree to which you excel in your God-given assignment. Write it down, please. The degree to which you excel in your God-given assignment. Your assignment can have an expression of your ambition. Your assignment is that which you were sent to do here on earth. It says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Lo, I come in the volume of the book nobody here is a biological accident how he put it i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh the night cometh where no man can walk again at any level you can still find purpose and make the at any level at any level you can find purpose please listen to me don't say I am too old ask Abraham don't say I am too young ask Jeremiah 
Don't say, I am too weak. Ask Gideon. The Bible is full of men that kill our excuses for purpose. At whatever age, stage, and level, there is still room to start. Men, that there is something that God has put within me. Can I tell you this? In your assignment is your relevance. In your assignment is your honor. In your assignment is your influence. A mango tree does not produce posters. A mango tree does not produce publicity material. A mango tree is not called apostle or prophet. All it does is to have big mango fruits. If the mango tree does not have fruit, men will pass it without knowing. But the moment fruit starts to come, it will start calling people and you will stand under it and even climb the mango tree. If your life becomes like that mango tree, no man will ignore you. Not when you are using your gift to serve a generation. This therefore defines for us the secret of frustration. If nobody is following you and nobody is placing a demand upon your life and your destiny, the diagnosis is that you have not found your place in destiny. The consequence of not finding your place in destiny is that you will be angry, you will be frustrated. That's why society is full of jealous and angry people praying for others to fail as a consolation and a succor to their own failure. Is God speaking to us? You must challenge yourself this morning that in the name of Jesus Christ, I will walk in the path of purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, the books that must be written in my lifetime must be written. In the name of Jesus, the money that my life should bring to the kingdom, I will not relent until that happens. Can I challenge us? Men, God rested only on the seventh day. If you are not in the seventh day, do not rest. Don't rest on the second day. Don't rest on the third day. God only rested on the seventh day. Number one, first index, your spiritual progress. Number two, your level of mental transformation. Are we still together, please? Number three, your assignment, the degree to which you have discovered your divine assignment. You can go to bed happy and you can wake up happy. If you are not working in purpose, there is no reason why you should be claiming long life. The Bible says, I shall not die, but live and declare. Not just live and roam around. The justification for longevity is that you are using the time to advance the kingdom. You become untouchable to the degree to which your life supports kingdom come. Number four, very quickly. The fourth index to measure success is your health and physical well-being. I'm very glad I was told that there is a session about mental health and so on and so forth. The fourth index to measure success for any man seated here and listening to me is your health and your physical well-being. I have a confession to make. I didn't used to pay as much attention to my health as I do now. Do you know why? Because you see, and, and this may be a, 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 word of, a word of advice for someone, especially people in ministry. One of the fathers of faith called me in the East after preaching in his conference, and he called me. He said, Apostle, let me give you an advice. Be careful. Africans kill their prophets. He said, you must pay attention to your health. And because of realities like the miraculous, divine health, are we together? And all these spiritual realities, they usually for many people become the justification for careless living. We eat anyhow, we live anyhow, and what we do not know that every time we are administering death upon ourselves, it is painful to labor so much and not have the opportunity to enjoy your sacrifices of years because of carelessness. Your physical well-being. 
and your health. I made up my mind that from that time until forever, I will pay attention to my health. I had the honor of seeing uncles, fathers, senior colleagues. I saw very agile and happy people become weak people. Now, please don't feel sad. If you are here and there's something wrong with your health, in the name of Jesus, we are praying. And we believe for the power of God to bring you healing in Jesus' name. But can I tell you this? There are most people today, if they had paid attention to any healed health from its infancy, it would not be beyond the level of management. Usually, we just ignore it and we call it faith until it deteriorates to a level where it becomes an issue of concern. We must pay attention to our health. One scripture again that will help you. And God rested. Very powerful scripture. It is good to rest. It is good to sleep. We need our bodies for a long time. And we must obtain grace from God. I can't remember where I was traveling. To. While I was traveling, the driver was driving so fast. And I asked him a question. It was okay I was going for a meeting and he was running so fast and I asked him a question I said are you the one going for the meeting he said no I said why are you rushing with me like this people have died just for careless driving are we in agreement on a road that is not a trunk a road they are still driving at 120 and 140 and in the next five minutes they will still stop now, please let's take responsibility over our longevity and our physical health. One of the ways that you keep yourself alive is to protect the kind of information that is around your environment. I tell you, our world is full of negative things that can depress you in less than 24 hours. As a personal principle, I am very disciplined about the information that comes around my ears. Why? Because there are millions of people depending on my knowledge of God, depending on the truths and the sermons that come for them. I cannot be so selfish to punish millions of people by not guarding my heart jealously. You never find me around people gossiping, speaking, talking about this. I don't have that time. I'm on a project. You must protect yourself. The Bible says, listen very carefully, the Bible says a broken spirit can dry up the bones. Negative news, bad news. <laughs> True story. I pray my father does not watch this, this broadcast because of what I'm about to say. One time, my dad called my mom and said she should never make cabbage for him again or something like that. I said, cabbage? Cabbage that is a blessing. Do you know what happened? He was watching a documentary. <laughs> and in that documentary, they were talking about cabbage. And I don't know what is it that cabbage carries. And they started explaining a few things. And I said, you see, for someone is happy about the gift of cabbage. And a man who had eaten cabbage all his life, if we were to kill you, you would have been dead now. And just because of a five or ten minutes marketing, you now reject cabbage. In the name of Jesus, let obtain grace to guard our eyes, our ears, and every information that comes to us. Now, in as much as I am pro-health, at the same time I know that everything God gave us, if it came from God, it will not destroy you. Is that true? Because if you are done listening to the news, and food experts are done with you, you will live a fasted life forever. Because it will look as if there are demons in every food. They will tell you orange has something that can kill you. Banana has something that can kill you. Even rice that you are eating, you are about to die tomorrow. And at the end of it, there is nothing again to eat. The Bible teaches us how to eat well. Give thanks. When you give thanks... <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 
Everything you find in the Bible that they ate, you can eat it. If Jesus ate it, he ate fish, he ate bread, he ate corn, he ate figs. Manna came from heaven. It was even the angels themselves that sent it. Let's be careful. It's good to protect us. Guard the information that we hear. Let's try another mic and see. Praise God. Are we still together? Very quickly, I have two more and we'll wrap up. Number five. Is God helping us this morning? The fifth index to measure success biblically is your financial prosperity. This is the fifth biblical index to measure prosperity and success. No matter how much you succeed, if it does not translate into your financial well-being, you are in trouble. The subject of finance has been quite a controversial one all across the body of Christ with very sharp divides. There are people who absolutely believe in the necessity of financial resources for their well-being, their families, and the advancement of their lives. And then the other side of the pendulum, we have people who for whatever reason may seem to have a problem with the blessing of the Lord. In both cases, I know that there are exaggerations. There are people who the context of their communication as far as finance is concerned is carnality, materialism, and all they teach you is just for self-aggrandizement. You know, there is just a promotion of flesh. However, let me submit to you that if you ever subscribe for a life of poverty, it is a dangerous and a defeated life. A man can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity, financially speaking, your attention and your heart still being on Jesus while you live a life that is meaningful and useful. Can I tell you this? Lack of financial resources will cause you more pain than demon spirits. I assure you. If I ask all of us to submit prayer requests right now, just write two things that you want God to do in your life. I may be wrong, correct me if I am, but over 80% of us here, our prayer request will have one expression or the other of financial advancement. Am I right? If I'm correct, shout amen. amen. It takes money to build a good house. It takes money to give your children good education. It takes money to live well yourself. Financial prosperity gives you options. It grants you the grace to live a life of integrity. It's a terrible thing to live your life worrying about money. Lack of financial resources can produce a plethora of compromises. Many times when we talk about when we talk about our children who compromise here and there, they do not compromise because they have all the abundance they need. It is lack of those financial resources that eventually lead to compromise. Finances. We must trust God and obtain grace that God will bring us into financial sabbaths. We must trust God for grace that God will bless us even financially. I made up my mind that as a minister of the gospel and as a leader, that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually on fire. Listen, there is an angle of influence that is controlled by the availability of financial resources. There is a degree of financial availability that must be there to escort you to the corridors of power and influence you cannot separate influence you cannot separate um, well-doing from the availability of financial resources I always say it this way the name of Jesus is very heavy it takes financial resources to lift it up for the nations to see hallelujah 
the last index and then we'll wrap up to measure success is quality destiny relationships you are only successful to the degree to which you build quality destiny relationships if you ever will be fruitful in life you will have to do it on the basis of relationships everything in life produces on the basis of relationships it takes a relationship between a husband and a wife to produce children it takes a relationship between a man and the Holy Spirit to produce a life of exploits our world is relational if you do not understand the principles of relationships you might live a life of failure and utter defeat in my final session I'm going to be teaching us on the concept of fulfillment and one of the things that we'll be touching on is relationships I have benefited today from profitable and meaningful relationships relationship with God relationship with the Holy Spirit relationship with mentors and fathers relationships with colleagues and contemporaries relationship with sons daughters and proteges and mentees we live our lives immersed in relationships woe betides a man who looks back and finds out you are alone the bible says it is not good for man to be alone he was not just saying it in the context of marriage alone if you look back and there is nobody no shoulder you can cry on our society is full of lonely people wealthy but lonely educated but lonely there are parents in all age all their children desert them and they are alone here's what the Bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor have you been blessed this morning a quick recap in one minute before I wrap up my session the Lord brought to our understanding this morning the idea of success that success means to excel to do well to advance and we said that psychologically speaking and even spiritually speaking there is a dimension of your fulfillment that is tied to progress you cannot feel fulfilled when you feel stagnated when you feel you are a failure and that God is not against our success he used two words for Joshua, prosperity and success. And that I said there are six biblical indices to measure a man's success. So when you say, I am successful in the kingdom, we must test what you have said against these six parameters. Number one, your spiritual progress, we said. Number two, your level of mental transformation, sustaining superior belief systems. Number three, the extent to which you excel as far as your God ordained assignment is concerned. Number four, your health and physical well being. Number five, the availability of financial resources, the degree to which you are able to do well, having financial resources and using it effectively for your own comfort, your family, the advancement of the kingdom, and betterment of society. And finally, the degree to which you sustain quality relationships that help you know God, help you preserve your values, and help you contribute your quota to the advancement of the kingdom and nation building. If you excel in these six areas, then indeed you are successful. Can I tell you this? Based on these parameters, even five over six is failure. You must excel in all of them. Let me wrap up with this scripture. Genesis 24 verse 1. Please let's arise as we pray. Genesis 24 verse 1. Media, please help us. This is the last scripture. Genesis 24 and verse 1. Please read with me. If everyone, if you can see it, read with me. Ready? One to read. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham 
in all things. Now you're going to put your name where Abraham is and read it as a prophecy and then we'll pray. Are you ready now? And Joshua Selman was old and well stricken in old age. And the Lord had blessed Joshua Selman in how many things? How many things? Turn it into a prayer. Please lift your voice. Thank you, Lord, for this word. I decree and declare as a visionary man, I am making progress. I advance spiritually. I advance mentally. I advance as far as my assignment and my God-ordained destiny is concerned. My career and my pursuit. I advance in my health and my physical well-being. I advance financially. No poverty, no lack. I make definite intentional progress. I advance relationally. If someone pray, let it be from the depth of your heart. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain 